I we 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 finally made it to the end of all of those chapters and lessons that I was describing uh, to you earlier and, and misdescribing until last week. Uh, uh, let me remind you that next week uh, is Pentecost Sunday. So we will be um, looking into the book of Acts uh, in the New Testament uh, to study Pentecost, which is the 50th day. And my understanding, and I'll, of course, uh, elaborate on this as much as I, I can. I don't have a lot of elaboration, but my understanding is that from the time of Passover in the um, uh, in Egypt when uh, they had the night of Passover and, and the eldest uh, in all of the Egyptian families uh, was stricken and died. That from that night when the Israelites were said, go away, until the time that they got to the promised land was 50 days. When they got to the promised land or to the edge of it, they sent 12 spies over there to spy out the land to see what it is that we're going to do and how are we going to go about it. And then, of course, those guys were gone for, I think, I think it was 40 days when they returned with their report. And, 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 and the whole group decided not to go into the promised land. So 50 days from the time that they left Egypt until the time that they got to the border of the promised land, Fifth, the 50th day when they got there. That's the celebration for Pentecost. And that was the day that they were celebrating in the book of Acts, which we're going to study next week. Okay. I don't know if that's accurate, but that's my understanding of what uh, what the 50th day has to do with. It has to do with the length of travel. Now, you can make it from Egypt just walking. One or two people, three people, a handful of people, a dozen people. You can make it from Egypt to Israel in seven days, or I, I'm, I'm just picking a number, I don't know a number, it doesn't take 50 days. But there, were, there, there was a, a couple of million of these folks. So I, I don't, don't know if we can, can properly grasp uh, the logistics of moving uh, a couple of million people uh, that same distance. It, it, it took them, as I understand it, 50 days to make it there. And, and, and they celebrated when they got there. And they sent the 12 spies off, and the 12 spies came back, and then they didn't celebrate. Because ten of those spies said, nah, they're, they're giants in that land. We, we can't. I don't want to get off really on next Sunday's lesson. I'm just giving you a, a little indication of, of what it is that's in, uh, in the last lesson of this quarter. But today we're in the last chapter of the book of Galatians. 
and uh, Galatians were, uh, of course, uh, Gentiles, uh, not, not Jewish people at all. But Paul had gone there. I'm going to show you the map that Paul used to get there. Uh, he, he left over here at Antioch, according to uh, the arrows here, and he went up this way to Galatia, right here, it says Galatia. It's, it's this green area that extends uh, all the way back in here. Well, I don't know exactly where all Paul went. There are some um, some familiar names of, of, of towns in uh, Galatia that he went to, but he went he went as an evangelist to the Gentiles. And they had been worshiping a fire god. They had been worshiping um, stone gods and wood gods and metal gods uh, and imaginary gods. Uh, so they didn't know anything about what you and I know in uh, Spring, Texas, of what we've read. In the, this book had not been written yet. Uh, and when I say this book, I'm talking about the Bible, but but uh, uh, in particular, the book of Galatians was just now being written and sent off to these folks. But Paul went up there to talk to and to try to, for lack of a better word, I'm gonna say to try to educate this bunch of of Gentiles to teach them um, why, why it was that the gods that they were worshiping were not uh, real gods, that they were just fooling themselves uh, worshiping those kinds of gods. So he wanted to teach them about the grace of Jesus but you can't, this is just my opinion, but you can't start in the middle and teach them. You have to go back to the beginning of the covenant promise, which he did, I think, and started talking to them about Abraham. And he brought them forward from Abraham and from all of the the, the the things that happened in the seed of Abraham up until the time that Jesus was born in that bloodline of Abraham <coughs> and that he was the uh, the God for them to worship. So the first five chapters of of the book of Galatians is, as I have described to you before, is basically an argument as to whether the law is, uh, uh, is salvation or whether grace is salvation. And the reason or the need for the argument was, argument was because that a bunch of and I don't know how many, it's just that uh, the word is plural, the Judaizers came behind Paul and taught, taught the Galatians that they had to um, obey the law as well as worship Jesus. So that's the first five uh, chapters 
uh, this argument. The sixth chapter, there's still a little bit of that, but not, not a lot. In the sixth chapter, it, it begins to talk to the mature Gentiles, the mature Christians in the Gentile um, arena, if you will, of, of Galatia. Uh, and, and talking to them about how Christians are supposed to live. Now let me tell you that uh, this chapter only has 18 verses. And uh, I, I think that we will easily finish 18 verses, but I have some other material that I would like to um, to, 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 I don't know if add is the right way to put it, but uh, for us to compare uh, ourselves 2,000 years later to these Galatians uh, from, from roughly 2,000 years ago. But here we start in chapter 6, verse 1, with Paul talking to these fellows that he has, has basically been admonishing to, look, you got to know what those guys fool you. Stand fast. I don't know if you remember, but last week that was one of the verses. Stand fast. Don't let somebody f fool you. So when you begin to believe something, stand fast in that belief. Verse 1, brethren, and of course that means sistern too, if a man be overtaken in a fault, and of course that means if a woman be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So uh, the the indication he's uh, he, what he's what he's trying to do there is he he's trying to say, look, if if one of the guys who used to be in your group, he used to come to your small group, he used to say, yeah, I believe that Jesus of Nazareth. If, if he now is starting to say, oh, we got to keep the law too, okay? Well, he's saying to the to the the first guy there to say to the the, the one that's now kind of changing his mind and be in the small group, uh, be in the be in, be in the group of keeping the law. He's saying he's saying no 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 you you guys that are spiritual, you go to that one that's beginning to say that we, we, we need to uh, keep the law as well. And, and, and there might be other sins included, but the point is this is the context in which this book is written. So that's the reason that I am uh, presenting it the way that I am presenting it. And he's, uh, he's saying in the latter part of verse 1, please consider yourself, please consider yourself, lest you also be tempted. In other words, he's saying, when, when, when you go to talk to a guy that, has, that seems to be uh, changing his mind or adding or whatever, you be careful that he doesn't convince you. Okay? Stand fast, therefore. Verse 2. Bear ye 
one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Well, uh, bearing one another's burdens uh, is a difficult thing to do, especially 2,000 years later in today's uh, society where we are. And the reason is we are so mobile that when somebody gets out of our sight, somebody who's, uh, who's, uh, who's uh, burden we're, we're bearing, when they get out of sight, we, we forget about them because we got traffic to worry about or whatever all the other things of of life are now having said that churches are good places for us to uh, stay aware of people's burdens and the reason uh, that that's so is that we generally have a prayer list we generally have uh, a, a list of people whose needs and whose burdens uh, are, are presented to us on a regular basis so that we won't forget them, so that we continue to, um, to consider them and to bear them. And the latter part of verse 2 says, by doing that, by, by bearing one another's burden, the latter part of verse 2 says, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Boy, that's, that's saying we're fulfilling the law of Christ just by being uh, uh, considerate of another person's burden and, and, and helping doing what we can and, uh, and, and helping uh, one another. Verse 3 says, For if a man, and this is, let me tell you that I've got a lot of, of verses that I, when I get to, the, to them in, in, in class, over the time, over the years, I say, this is my very favorite one. It's my very favorite verse. Yeah, I, I get I get a bunch of those, but this is this is it. This is my very favorite one. It says for if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And I usually like to add that he's only fooling himself or deceiving himself. He's not fooling you or me. Because, because we, we, we usually can see that in somebody who thinks that they're, you know, somebody on a stick or some other description uh, to, to describe somebody that, are, that think that they are really something. And they're, they're nothing more, uh, more better than any of the rest of us. They're just, uh, so, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, they're probably even worse than the rest of us because they think they're something. And we know they're not. Verse 4, But let every man prove his own work, and then 
shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't there, there's a bunch of ways maybe to interpret or to describe uh, this, this verse, but this is, this is basically saying that, and it doesn't say this, but it, it's the same thing and it applies, that, that when you stand before, uh, before uh, the judge, You, 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 you be responsible for your own actions and not for somebody else's. Read it again. But let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Now, that uh, seems to go against, but it's, it's just uh, the context in which this is written that makes it different. But... I go back to verse 2, it says, Bear ye one another's burden. Well, verse 4 says, Yeah, you bear one another's burden, but, but you're not responsible for what that person does. You're not, you're not responsible for what the outcome of that person's burden is. You're responsible for your own. You rejoice at the end of verse 4. You rejoice in, in yourself or himself alone and not in another. And that, uh, that, that also uh, um, fits a saying that we have uh, about somebody who gets... Uh, I don't know the right word, but let's say promoted, uh, and we say that that they uh, they're just on the coattails of somebody else above them. Well, in this life, that happens all the time. Uh, that that I, I I worked at places in in corporate America in my professional life years ago and I observed uh, I saw it happen where uh, guys who, who weren't qualified but who were the favorite of the supervisor let's say and the supervisor got it just promoted them, brought them right along. They, whether they were qualified or not, it didn't matter. Keep them out golfing? Yes, some of that sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the other thing they do in sales that's really bad. What's that? They take them to strip bars. Oh, really? Yeah, very common. Yeah, yeah, they might do that to me. You know, they've done that to you? All the salesmen never do that, huh? Men's no, I'm just joking. I saw that in Michigan a lot. Common. What? Corporate America, very common. There's lots of strip bars in Michigan. It's my turn for a long time. It's my, up in there. it's my turn to talk. <laughs> no, you don't get a turn. Yeah, just remember. You don't get a turn, John, sorry. <laughs> For every man, verse 5, For every man shall bear his own burden. Well, there's not much I can say about that. You, uh, but it, but again, in the in con the context in which this whole thing is written, it seems to be different 
uh, for us to go back uh, to verse 2 and it says bear ye one another's burden uh, it, it's uh, it's talking about us uh, being mindful of other people's troubles and concerns and problems and sins and who, who knows what all and to pray about them but we're not we're not responsible for the way it turns out we just we're just not there's uh, occasionally I get in involved in conversations uh, with people who who want to know why it is that uh, that God didn't answer their prayer and that things didn't work out right okay and uh, there's no explanation to that sort of thing. We are just human being people and we're, we live and we die. We're, it's appointed once and to us to, to die. And you know, I don't need to get into all of that kind of thing. Verse six, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. That's, I think what that's saying is that you all are supposed to talk back to me, just like you did a while ago. You kind of took over, you know. <laughs> but you, it's okay for you to communicate. Uh, to me and tell me your your stories and tell me uh, how something has affected you and and and, uh, and it's okay for me to tell you how things have affected me. Is is all, all it's really doing is saying that look we're we're all equal. There's nobody among us that is something on a stick. We're all um, equal. Verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I don't think there's really anything to add to that. That if you if you plant corn, you're going to get corn. I, I've got a grandson who has uh, recently tilled some land and planted a garden. This boy's 25 years old. Call him a boy. He's he's a he's a a good young man, uh, and he has begun to plant things and see how they come up. Now he he doesn't, he doesn't come from a farming background, meaning, and nobody in my family uh, are farmers. But anyway, he said he was going to plant some corn, get some corn to come up. And I said, I said, boy, you got a lot to learn about being a farmer. I can see that because corn comes in a can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Raising food, and they're under 50 years old. They weren't chasing wealth. They weren't chasing the market. 
Yeah. If it comes out. But I thought it was very interesting because probably those same people that I know, had you talked to them back in November, what? <laughs> they probably wouldn't have even thought about trying to garden food. Yeah. That's all observation. Yeah, well, uh, things happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about all I know to say about that. But and, some canned seeds? And they, yeah. <laughs> and they, uh, some corn can seeds. And you might have the whole can just down on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll pop, they'll pop up more cans. <laughs> and they happen, and so when I said things happen, they, they happen all right, but they happen in cycles. And, and we go around and we go round and round and round and round. And then we come back again. And, and his kids are gonna wanna get away from the farm. You know, he's got, I, I don't know what, I think an acre maybe, give or take, I don't know how. Uh, uh, but he uh, bought himself a tiller and went out there and tilled the land and he's, he's preparing everything, getting all set up. And, and, uh, and of course I wish him uh, success. It's like Green Acres. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's just like those Green Acres. But be not deceived in verse 7. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That verse is not talking so much about the things that I've been talking about here. It's talking more about uh, the, the, this argument in the first five uh, uh chapters uh, about either the law or grace and if you sow the law you're going to reap the punishment of the law if you don't keep it all if you sow grace you know the good part the good part is if you make a mistake he extends grace to you that covers your mistake. And that doesn't happen under the law. So don't 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 be mocking God here and and going off and doing these other things is what Paul I think is saying to these folks. Verse 8, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now that, that's a little different way to say it. But we all have fleshly sinful desires. You know, we'd, we'd all rather sleep late than come to church, for instance. Uh, and, and there's a whole bunch of others um, that uh, I, I won't name, but Tom Tom already has, you know. So uh, I, was, I like coming to church. No, I was talking about I was talking about what you had mentioned earlier there that that are fleshly kinds of of desires that people get caught up in. Ninety percent. Ninety percent of the men in church. Probably. Verse nine. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap. Those cans of corn are gonna come up. <laughs> if we faint not. Verse 10. Yeah. Uh, verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, 
let us do good unto all men. But especially, I put the word but in there, but especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So that plants the obligation right on, right squarely on those. Uh, see, see going, going back to this green spot in the map over here that Paul had taken uh, opportunity along here to teach these guys uh, from Abraham's covenant to the coming of Jesus and 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 they they, they accept uh, Jesus as the one to worship then then it says as we have therefore opportunity does do good unto all men but especially unto them who uh, have accepted Jesus. We'll we'll be good to the other neighbors that that are that are Gentiles and are still worshiping some idol god, but especially we'll be good to those of the household of faith. You see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. I don't know that there's much to add to that, and yet I can, I will tell you that in uh, uh, religious books and religious writings, boy, there's a lot of stuff written about that one verse, about whether Paul really wrote this himself or whether he uh, dictated it to some scribe who wrote it. and. Uh, yeah, there's no reason to get into that argument. We're, we're glad this is in Mark. Excuse me? We're glad this is in Mark. Yeah, we're glad this is in large print. Verse 12, As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. So in, in verse 12, he's describing why the Judaizers are, are, uh, are coming along and saying that you've got to uh, conform to the law. Uh, and, and the reason is, they, they, they're going to preach that you got to conform to the law just so that they don't get persecuted for the cross or for the, yeah, for the persecution for the cross of Christ. The last verse 13. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. We, we know that nobody keeps it but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Uh, they, uh, Paul, I think Paul is saying that they get together later and they say, oh, ha, 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 ha. look, we fooled another one. I don't know that, but that's the way it comes across to me. Verse 14, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in me, or for in Christ Jesus, I'm sorry, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. But what you what you get when you get in Christ Jesus is you you become a new creature, and circumcision doesn't make you a new creature, and 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 if you don't get circumcised, it doesn't make you a, a, a new creature. Verse sixteen, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, 
for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Now, let me tell you, I'm uh, among the people who um, I don't know the right way to put I don't I certainly don't mean to take on me any uh status here, but among the people who know me I am I'm pretty known for the fact that I pray short prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Long Sunday school class, short prayer. There you go. <laughs> There you go. It's, it's true. What I, what I, what I want, uh, the reason I say that and the reason I admit that, the reason I acknowledge that, is that these last, uh, uh, this last verse here is a wonderful short prayer for every one of you, for all of us. Or even me to pray when we pray for one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit all day, every day, and tomorrow, and the next day. Now I'd like for uh, us to look at some other material which I indicated to you earlier that I was going to do. I would like you to turn to the book of Genesis. It's all the way to the left. It's all the way to the left. And I would like for you to look in chapter 1. I'm going to read four verses. That says marriages. So, not that far. <laughs> no, no, not that far left, Tom. <laughs> I want to read, uh, and, and these are familiar things uh, to all of us, but but to me they seem important that um, that we remind ourselves after having read Galatians chapter 16 that we remind ourselves of who we are and where did we come from let's look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 Ready? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, that's us, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now skip to verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, 
It was very good. And the evening and the morning were Saturday or Friday. It was Friday back then. It's, we, it's Saturday now for us. I right, let's let's turn to the book of Romans. It's quite a ways. It's all the way into the New Testament after the book of Acts. Romans chapter three, please. Okay, Romans chapter 3, I want to read starting at verse 10. And I'm only going to read four verses. Verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Okay. And we have just read in the book of Genesis that we were made in the image of God. You, 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 you think maybe God is righteous? Yeah. But somehow those of us he has made in his image is not, not one. Verse 11. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And then skip to verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Give us some idea of who we are. Being justified freely by his grace. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty important. To, pretty important if you if you if you live in Galatia up here to to stick with the grace that you were taught and not go back to the law. Pretty important. Look at Second Corinthians. Chapter 5. I'm going from left to right in the Bible if you uh, haven't picked up on that. We did Genesis and then Romans and now 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 5. And again, I'm only going to this time read three verses. Verse 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, when we've come across that verse uh, in our in our lessons from time to time, I have described that to you as a as as a child's toy called etch a sketch. You know, it, you can you can do all the sinning you want to on that uh, piece piece of uh, flimsy paper 
and you lift it up, <laughs> hallelujah, it all goes away. Sketch a sketch of sketch, a little knobs. I don't know what those things are called. They're called something else. You pull it, you pull it for daily, right on it, and you pull it up. Uh, it's it's, 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 it's you need to go back and research your toys, Tom. Uh, that's, 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 that was the earlier etch a sketch. Was etch a sketch before there was a etch a sketch? Yeah. Yeah, I think they've come around or something. It's the same here. principle. Yeah. I know what you're talking about, but I didn't think those were called etch a Well, they were when I, when I, when I was young. Uh, maybe, maybe they... etch a is the toy by Mattel. The toy by Mattel with the little knobs and you turn them. And I, don't know about, I don't know anything about any little knobs, but... Uh, Same result. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yes. I don't think they're called the, the same thing. It was invented in the 70s or something. That's a sketch. Oh, no. That's a sketch. I played with that's a sketch in the 50s. I know what you're talking about. In the I mean, 50s. I don't think it's called that. Yeah. Google it. Yeah. Prehistoric etch a sketch. Prehistoric etch a sketch. They shake the rock and then scrape the rock on the ground and it goes away. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're talking about. It's like, a, it's like it transfers its gray and you pull the film up yeah. and then it marks on it. Pull the film up. You're getting it, Tom. Yeah, it's a I know what you're talking about, but I just don't think it's called an etch a sketch. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're wrong. Etch a sketch, the, the one that, that's brown, that's branded by Mattel, yeah. is not that. And so, anyway, <laughs> it's my turn to talk again. Uh, yeah, it's that, 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 that's what they call it. That's what I'm talking about. Talking John's about talking about something else. He's talking about the pad thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they came out with a little minimal one first. But these are still called etch sketches so That's yeah. the ones with the knobs. Yeah, the, knobs. Yeah. the other one has a little pencil. Yeah, yeah. and you just yeah. lift. Yeah, I got you. I'm sorry, John. You use your finger. And then you <laughs> can. <laughs> and then you know, when you lose the, yeah, lost you lose the, the, the little <laughs> plastic pen, then you use your finger. Yeah. And yeah. Like <laughs> and it makes a little crinkle noise when you. Yeah. You know, this, rem this, uh, this reminds me of. Uh, uh, it's my turn to talk. Sorry, <laughs> John. The better subject this time. Yeah. Uh, uh, this pa past week, uh, uh, Dorothy and I saw on, on television, we were watching um, uh, Mark Lowry and. Uh, and uh, he had uh, on his program, uh, he had a, I don't know, but some woman singer that he said he didn't know who she was. But he showed a clip of her where she talked about, as the ancient songwriter said, because he lives. Does anybody have any idea when Because He Lives was written? I think in the 50s. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I'm guessing it was written in the 50s. Yeah, is that, is that ancient? 50s or 40s. Nah, it's not that far back. Bill Gaither wrote that. And Bill Gates is still alive. He's he's not an ancient songwriter, but Mark Lowry was taking great glee in that, and he couldn't wait till he could get off his program so he could call Bill and tell Bill he's an ancient songwriter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things things just happen in life. We don't we we don't know how they happen. I don't, I don't know. Um, all right, let's look at um, 
Ephesians, which is not too far. It's only, let's see, Ephesians. Uh, it's only 15 pages in my book here. Uh, Ephesians to chapter 4. I'm sorry, chapter 2. I mis misstated there. I made a mistake. Okay. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read again only three verses, verses 8 through 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man, any man, lest any man should boast. So it doesn't matter how great a man there is. He's no more saved than us peons. And he can't boast about it either. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Now, much of the argument that I have described to you uh, in the first five chapters of Ephesians that had to do with whether uh, and salvation came by the law or whether it came by grace. Much, much, much of that, much of that had to do with good works. That the law said, you got you gotta, you gotta, you just, all you gotta do is good works. And, and we say, no, that's not right. But then we get to this verse, and it says that the good works has been ordained that we should walk in them, that we should do good works. And uh, I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, but uh, some lesson I said, I said that we, we still have to do good works. We, we, still, we still have to uh, feed the hungry and, and give uh, water to the thirsty and uh, clothes to the naked and we have to visit the prisoners and we have to take care of the widows and we have to take care of the orphans and you know, all those good works because that's what Jesus left for us to do. Most Christians, in my opinion, are confused because they think that Jesus left us here to save the whole world. Well, he's made it available for the whole world. And, uh, and, and we're not going to be able to, to save the whole world. We're not going to be able to save our neighbor. We've, we've already read, I've read to you scriptures where uh, each of us are, are our own in, in Galatians chapter 6. We're responsible for our own doings. We, yeah, we bear one another's burden, but uh, we, can, we can only take pride in, in, a, uh, in a humility sort of way, humble sort of way. We can only take pride in, uh, in, in boy, boy, aren't we glad we made it? When we, when we get there. 
when this life is over, when our spirit walks out of this fleshly thing into the next world, and that's the only pride we can have is we've made it, but not through anything that we did. Uh, I'm, I, I have two or three others, but uh, I'll uh, have mercy on you today. And, and so, are there any thoughts or questions or concerns or criticisms or complaints or? Yeah, well, those are ancient songwriters. Yeah, yeah the uh, what what uh, the way it was presented on the program that we watched was that uh, uh, Gloria wrote the lyrics and uh, and Bill wrote the music. So, 1971, it was wrote. 19, and, that's ancient. That's and ancient. Etch a sketch was designed or patented by Mattel in 1950. So yeah, I was, was a kid. Older than I thought. I was a kid. In and it was a. Yeah, and it was just a little, yeah. little yeah. piece of cellophane that you lift up and and it would erase when you laid it back I down. I've never seen an etch a sketch except with the knobs. You know. You're too, you're too young. I think uh, not, 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 not a brand etch a sketch. I know what you're talking about, the thing you pull up. Yeah, but okay. It wasn't an etch a sketch. Yeah, you know, maybe that was something different. That's something else. No, 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 that's etch a sketch. Original etch a sketch had knobs. We should, we, yeah, you're right. We Here should bring every. We, that's we should find a project. Maybe we should find some class. Keep notes. Peggy, you can talk about that. That's our class project. Uh, this week. I'll yeah. find the old one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, probably one in my attic. It it uh, it'd be a sad thing for the word to get out that our class had a fight over it. Just get. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, We'll redeem ourselves. We're, we'll calm down. But you told me right. Magic it may have been called John the Magic Script or something no. different that picked up. I don't know what name it had on, but. And then they just come out with magic. So yeah, it's just I did. I did bring magic it up. Magic sheet. Yeah. Well, you I did Google film. and I got some weird movie. I, I didn't oh, get the oh, edge of sketch with the knobs, but I didn't see the magic sheet. Yeah. Yeah, those cost something else. Yeah. We really get detail, don't we? And I, well, I mean, <laughs> probably those were invented way before that. Now yeah, maybe you know, Mr. Clean's magic pad, if you ask that. Oh, it was called a magic sketch. Magic sketch? Oh, oh wait a minute. Right. No, it's still on. Um, tell me what I want. This thing is you just... Have you have to type in... You have to in. find it. I have to do what? You have to type in. You have to type in. Yeah, an ancient phone. It probably had it in about 1952. Listen, it, I I it, it, it is what I say it is. <laughs> Well, you were using just the pad, right? Not the little machine. You were talking about using the pad. No, there wasn't a machine. I know, but he's, I don't think the pad was called that. That's the only difference. I think so, you're right. It's not That's a big deal. That was my One contention all along. Called something else. Yeah, that was called. <laughs> you know what it is. It's just called something else. It's kind of ancient. Tom, Tom won the award. It's, it's something that they're, uh, Kind of like the old, remember when you used to give me a credit card and they put the, and they <laughs> use the carbon? Yeah, like a carbon sheet. Yeah, yeah and they would do that. Now that was just something different because yeah, like you microfilm. couldn't undo it. But what you're talking about is plastic, a plastic sheet. You go <coughs> yeah. down on it and you put it on there and write on it. And so you know, that's what I was talking about. It was a magic board. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. What I didn't like yeah, about it was etch a sketch. I just don't know what it's called. Yeah. What I didn't like about the etch a sketch, if you just barely move, it would change stuff. Shake it. Yeah. Yeah. If you just barely move it, stuff would disappear. Is that how it disappeared when you shook it? Yeah, that's and right. The other was the little knobs. Yeah, you had to shake it. I just can't believe she shakes it. I can't believe we're so ridiculous. John, that's a shame you can't really see anything that deep in the scripture. We have some more. Yeah, it'd be neat. It'd be neat if we could. <laughs> Here we go. We got more information. The Etch Sketch had a magnet and metal shaving. And when you did that, the stylus over the thing, it picked up the metal shavings and made the image. Then when you shook it or did whatever, it disappeared and disappeared. I thought you did the little doobies. Well, I thought did the, 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 the turn. That was a later. That was a later. <laughs> oh, so you did have those. <laughs> yeah, when you used to draw with a pen, I think, like one of those little pins you signed. Yeah, it was a little thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. And then they got a knob one. But I had the RT little pad that you lift up the film off of the pad. I'm telling you, when I was a kid, I played with a little gadget that I. Wow, it's kind of neat up here. Thank you. It's kind of powerful, like. They're all looking at you. What about 80 eyes are looking at you? You're welcome. I don't know why you felt it necessary to do that, but. I didn't want you to step on again. You were like a step on Well, thank you. Next week is the first week in, uh, in uh, I'm sorry, is the uh, uh, last day of May, May the 31st. It's Memorial Day. Well. Memorial Day is Monday. It's the last Monday of the month. I think the original was 31st. Here we go again. <laughs> we can either talk about <laughs> Twister or we can talk the about the was like 31st, but they moved it Light Bright or Hula Hoop or something. Oh, the last Monday in the month? Yeah. No Here we go subject. again. Listen, just but just. <laughs> just, <laughs> just because that they changed um, the holiday in February to the third Monday and called it President's Day, okay. it didn't change President Lincoln's birthday on the. 12th of February, or President Washington's birthday on, I think, the 16th, as I recall. They just combined the two of them and called it President's Day. And what they did for Memorial Day was they changed it to the last Monday in the month. But I'm telling you, Memorial Day is really next Sunday. Why do they merge the birthdays? Is it for Mark? Because they have to get Martin Luther King work. Day. That's a new day. Yeah. Martin Luther King. They had to make. Is that what all that happened? They had to make room for an additional holy day. Yeah. For what? For an additional holy day. Holy. Holy day. H O. L I D A Y. What is the additional holy day that they combine? Holiday. No, he said holy. Yeah. He said holy. I am so sorry. We have to be somewhere at 10 30, so. I'm sorry. As long as you're back here next week. It <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we had the shortest chapter, the longest teaching. <laughs> uh, shortest prayer. Shortest prayer. Last, last prayer. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. May God's presence be with your spirit.
all day long and the next day and forever and ever I pray Amen Thank you for being here today Thank you for putting up